Okay, let's do this. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alyssa and I'm here to help make healthy living easy and simple for you. So today we are going to be talking about meal prep. Now you might be noticing that I am wearing the same sweater that I wore in the last video. It's a different day, I promise, but it's very snowy outside and this is one of my coziest sweaters. So that's why I am wearing the same outfit that I wore last time. But that's besides the point because we are here to talk about meal prep and I'm doing things a little bit differently today and rather than giving you exact recipes to follow, we're kind of just gonna walk through the basics of meal prep and we're gonna talk about the types of recipes that you can make so that when you go and look for something on Pinterest or on Google, you can tell that that recipe is something that would be good for you to try a meal prep. So I hope you find this video helpful. If you do, please share it with your friends and family. I think meal prep is a really great way for people to stick to a consistent healthy eating habit. And it's also time saving, it's budget friendly, and it helps you get more comfortable and confident in the kitchen. We are gonna walk through the different types of meals that you can meal prep. I'm gonna give you some recipe ideas. I'm gonna link, of course, to all of the meal prep videos that I've done in the past. I'll also put a card right up in this corner for you so you can go watch that playlist when you're done with this video. But let's talk specifically about the types of recipes and foods that you can meal prep ahead. First, let's talk about breakfast. I think that breakfast for me personally is not something that I tend to meal prep because I make it in less than five minutes. I make a smoothie bowl pretty much every single morning. And I personally find that having a fresh breakfast and being able to change it up every single day is a good way for me to incorporate new foods and also just like change up my routine. If you are somebody that has absolutely zero time to make a meal in the morning, that is totally okay because there are tons of recipes that you can prep ahead and you can keep all week long. So let's first talk about smoothies. I think smoothies are something that can be prepped ahead. I've talked about them before in some of my videos. You can either do two things. So you could either do a smoothie pack. So essentially you just put everything that you wanna put into your smoothie in a little bag, throw it in the freezer, and then when you're ready to make it in the morning, you just blend it up with some water, some almond milk, some coconut water, whatever your liquid is, and you'll have your smoothie. So that you can do on a Sunday and make, for example, five different smoothie packs throughout the week. You could change up the flavors, etc. The other option is to make your smoothie the night before. I don't actually do this very often, but my boyfriend Matt does this every single time he is working out in the morning. So he'll make a smoothie before we go to bed, keep it in a little sealed container, whether that's a mason jar or one of those blender bottles, and then he'll have a smoothie to go with him when he's on the way to the gym. So that's another great example for how you can meal prep a smoothie. I find sometimes that smoothies that are prepped ahead can get a little bit of a weird flavor, but if you don't have a lot of vegetables in them and it's more fruit-based, I think it's better if it's kept overnight in the fridge. It lasts better for some reason. I don't know, maybe it's the sugar. But if I'm gonna make a smoothie and I'm gonna prep it, then I probably would do the first option, which is the smoothie packs. Our second breakfast option are oatmeal packs. So similar to the smoothie pack idea, an oatmeal pack is basically just a little baggie of quick cooking oats with whatever mix-ins you want to add. It's something that you can make really quickly. You can make a ton of different flavors and you can just throw in some hot water when you get to the office, heat it up and you have oatmeal. It takes like maybe 30 seconds. The beauty of this is that again, you can make a ton of different flavors. You can change up your meal every single time. I don't eat a ton of oatmeal, as you guys have probably seen in my What I Eat In A Day videos. I'm just not a big grain person. Like I find that eating a ton of grains in the morning just makes me feel kind of heavy. So I tend to err on the smoothie side or baked goods, which we'll talk about in a second. But if you are an oatmeal person, then these are a great option. They're really easy to put together and you could also just do a really big jar of them and just like scoop out the oats in the morning and cook up your oatmeal and that's another way that you could prep oatmeal ahead. Our third option is overnight oats or chia pudding. Just like the title suggests, these are something that you make ahead of time. We have definitely made chia pudding and overnight oats in our meal prep videos before, so I'm sure you guys know how to make those. These are definitely something that you could make five of a time and you could keep them all week long if you wanted. So I just like to make sure that I'm keeping them in a mason jar, something that's glass, something that is airtight, and they won't go bad in the fridge. So that is another way that you can prep breakfast ahead. 
Our fourth thing for breakfast is granola. So I actually just shared my absolute favorite granola of all time on the channel. So I'll put a card right here for you and I'll also put it in the description box below. But making a big batch of granola over the weekend is a great way to save yourself some time during the week. Granola itself tends to be on the higher calorie side because there's oftentimes oil or nut butter. There's a lot of things that go into it that make it a little bit higher calorie. So you don't wanna have a huge giant bowl of it because that could be a little bit too much. What you do wanna do is have about a quarter to maybe a third or a half cup of granola per serving. Scoop that onto some coconut yogurt, incorporate some fresh fruit, maybe it's bananas, berries, whatever you want, and that can be your little breakfast. So that is something that could take you literally five seconds to put together in the morning. You could eat at your desk, you could eat it on the go if you take the train or you take the bus to school, and it's also gonna be really filling and nutrient dense. And then our next thing for breakfast is baked goods. So baked goods, you can of course make ahead of time. Basically anything that's baked and you make a big batch of is great for meal prep. Sometimes if you are making gluten-free baked goods, they can go stale on the counter. So that's something that you wanna be mindful of. I actually like to freeze my baked goods. I have them for one day out on the counter and then if I don't finish them, which I don't tend to finish all of those things in one day, I will freeze the extras. I find that they keep their freshness best that way and then I just reheat them in the toaster oven. And you can actually do the same thing with pancakes and waffles. You can make a big batch, pop them in the freezer, reheat them in their toaster oven and that is a great way to prep ahead as well. All right, let's move on to lunch and dinner. I find that these two are very interchangeable. What I would make for lunch, I'd oftentimes eat for dinner and vice versa. So I'm not gonna break them down by lunch and dinner. I'm kinda gonna just give you like these savory meal options that we can talk about and that are really great for meal prep. So the first thing is a curry or a chili. So kind of like a stew. These are really great to meal prep because you can make a giant batch. They will last in the fridge all week long and they also can be frozen for later. So if you don't like to keep things in the fridge for more than like three to four days, then you can pop the extras in the freezer and they will be perfectly delicious. So there is a sweet potato black bean chili on my blog, which I know you guys love. There is my coconut curry. I have a bunch of stews on my blog. And these are really great because they are nourishing. They're high in vegetables. They're packed with fiber. I always make sure that I have a plant-based protein in my stews, so they're really high protein. So that's our first one, which is chilies, curries, or stews. Our second option for lunch and dinner is soup. I love soup. I think I like soup more than I like stews. I just love like a light, clear, kind of creamy soup. Ah, so good. So I have a ton of soup recipes, of course, for you as well. I've shared a bunch on the blog already. I've shared a bunch on the YouTube channel. One of my favorites is my creamy coconut mushroom soup. That is definitely one of your guys' favorites as well. I shared it recently in a What I Eat in a Day video and you guys have been making it all the time. There's also things that are a little bit denser or higher protein or more filling, like my detox lentil soup. I also have a creamy lentil dal, which is another kind of soupy type thing. And of course, they're similar to the stews in the sense that you can make a big batch, keep them all week long, and then freeze leftovers if you have any. Okay, our third option for lunch or dinner are casseroles. And these are not something that I personally make a lot. Um, I just find I don't know why I don't make them a lot, honestly. Like, I don't really have a real reason. I just don't tend to make casseroles that much. If you have some good recipes for plant-based casseroles, they could be a really great option for you to meal prep. This could include things like lasagna, it could include pasta casseroles, it could include grain-based casseroles, like rice casseroles or quinoa casseroles. They could also be things like my vegetable quinoa paella or something like that, where it's basically made in one pot, you might bake a big batch of it, and again, you can break it up into individual portions and you can keep it in your fridge. Reheating casseroles can be done in a pan, they can be done in a microwave, they can be done in an oven. And again, they're a really great way for you to get a hearty meal in and you can totally prep it ahead. And then my last option for meal prep recipes are bowls slash component meals. And I call them component meals because Essentially, it's like you're building all of these different components and then you put it all together into a bowl, a grain usually. So for me, that's quinoa, but you could also do brown rice. You could also do white rice. And then I do my vegetables. So that can be roasted vegetables. It can be steamed vegetables. It could be fresh vegetables. And then you wanna think about a protein. So that's beans, tofu. It could be chicken, fish, whatever, if you don't follow a plant-based diet. 
And then I like to finish it off with a healthy fat. So healthy fats for me either come in the form of avocado or a dressing. Having a few dressings in your fridge is actually a really great way for you to change up the taste or flavor of your meal, even if the components aren't changing. By swapping out your dressing a couple times, it can taste like a whole new meal, even though you aren't technically making a whole meal. Does that make sense? Hopefully that's not too confusing, but in my head it makes sense. So dressings are a really great way to add some healthy fats and also change up the flavors. And that pretty much does it for what I consider to be the best types of meals to meal prep. Of course, there are other options out there, but I hope that gives you like a good sense as you're searching for recipes, whether you're seeing them on my channel on YouTube or you're finding them on Pinterest or Google. I hope that you can kind of take these ideas and then you can incorporate the recipes that you find into your meal prep routine. Really my goal for you is to not feel stressed about meal prep. I know it can feel kind of overwhelming, but if you start to get into it and the more and more you do it the more comfortable you will become and I promise it will save you a ton of time especially if you are going to school you're working full-time you're balancing a busy schedule which like pretty much everybody in the world is meal prep is going to be a lifesaver for you I have a whole video all about some of the benefits of meal prep so if you're interested in learning more definitely check out the description box I've linked a ton of stuff for you down below recipes videos meal prep guides everything like that so check out the description box and now I'd love to hear from you. I'm thinking that I'm gonna start doing this in a lot of my videos where I ask you a question and we could call it question of the day, we could call it something like that, but essentially I wanna put a question out to you and I wanna get your feedback or I just love to hear from you. So getting your guys' feedback and hearing from you is one of the ways that I can help make sure that this channel is serving you best. So my question for you today is, do you meal prep? If so, what is your favorite thing to meal prep? If not, what is holding you back? So let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your feedback. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions for me, of course you can comment below. I read all of your comments. And if you haven't joined our community yet here on YouTube, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel. I'm here twice a week sharing tons of recipes and all that good jazz. So make sure to tap that red button that's right below this video. It says subscribe, that will automatically subscribe you. You can also hit that little bell that is right next to that video and that will turn on your notifications, making sure that you never miss another video. Otherwise, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Thank you so much for being here. I. I'm going to get my tea. I'm gonna snuggle up with my little puppy. She actually, the day that I'm filming this, is turning five years old. And if you haven't met Trevi yet, she was in my last video, so I'll link that for you below, but she is such a sweetie. Can't believe she's already five, but I'm going to enjoy this weather because it is nice and snowy outside, making it perfect for cozying up with a cup of tea. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day, and I will see you next week. Bye, guys! Thank you.